Hi guys, welcome back to Finding Tesoros, where we're gonna go explore places to find interesting things. I'm Ernesto, and today we're on our way to the Route 66 Museum. We are the Route 66 Museum. Route 66 is also called the Main Streets of America. Let's go inside. Welcome to the Route 66 Museum, located in Victorville, California. The museum has three rooms. This is our main Route 66 room and gift shop. All of our day-to-day -day funding comes from purchases from the gift shop and or donations. Second room, our communications, transportation, and sites along Route 66. The third room behind this wall is our Victorville room and it shows Victorville from 1860 up until right after World War II, all in pictures. 17 Model T. This is an actual vehicle. It is not a replica or a kit car. That is your parking brake mm -hmm. down by your foot. The first one, that's your gear selector. High, low, neutral. Just like a motor scooter or a motorcycle. Interesting. The middle one, that's reverse. And you have to hold it down the entire time you want the car to go backwards, and then you let up on it. Okay. Where your gas pedal would be at, that's your brake. Oh, that's your brake. That's your brake. <laughs> if you go to other Route 66 museums, they have the ropes around it, and it's in pristine condition. This came from the CNR Silver Mine. And it's 1917 edition of the Model T. You notice there is no cover over the top because this stayed primarily underground in Silver Mine as a worker. In New York City, my only connection to Route 66 was a TV show. One of the people, one of the originators of the museum, he was a roadie for Route 66 TV show. Is our tribute to George Air Force Base, which is now closed. It sits about seven and a half miles from here. And uh, when they closed, the, the base was the largest employer of Victorville until they closed it. This was my last duty assignment for the Air Force. I worked with the Space Shuttle Challenger. The milk bottles. I remember when they brought milk to our house in Harlem, which we lived in a brownstone. And <laughs> I get misty about this point. Um, the milkman, he had he brought the milk by horse and wagon. So he would come in off of 7th Avenue and 126th Street, chop up the apple. We were not allowed to get the apple to the horse until he said, ho, and the horse stopped. He would, uh, the brownstones normally had 13 steps going up to the front door. So, if he had an extra order, like somebody ordered cheese or cream that he didn't have with him, he would yell at the horse, ho, and the horse would come to a dead stop. We knew we could feed him. He would run down, get the cheese or whatever extra he needed, run back up the stairs, put it in the, in the holder. Coming down the stairs, he would yell, giddy up, and the horse would start walking again. This is your typical 50s, 60s washing machine. And you had the ringer on the top. Uh, in order to get my allowance on the weekends, my grandmother would disconnect the electric motor, pull the handle out, and that's what I did all weekend long, <laughs> cranking it to make it go through the rain and close out. I was like 10, 11 years old. My grandmother would send me to the store to get a quart of milk. The, uh, the supermarket, as we know it now, didn't come into being until the late 60s, early to late 60s. We had to go to each individual store to get something. 
Now, on Saturday nights, this was my favorite item because my grandmother would send me to the grocery, uh, to the uh, meat market. He would cut strips, and this is how we made hamburgers. This is before McDonald's or before Burger King or any other place that you know of, and we had to sit there, a clip to the table, you put the bowl under it, and you want it while you put the meat in, and your hamburger came out the front. So, now, in, now we're in the transportation slides along Route 66. This is one of my favorite things I show the kids. This is one of the original bricks. And I normally have them. Hold your hand out. Uh huh. Okay, I'll hold my hand up. Okay. You have your cell phone in the other hand? Heavy. I had I had one of these, but it's um my parents had it actually, but it was uh maybe up to here and it was black. Yep. Yeah. You have one of the later ones. Uh-huh, yeah. But not this, this one. one. Yeah, this one is two pounds light because we couldn't get the batteries to put in the back. Mm -hmm. So it's two pounds lighter than what it appears. Mm -hmm. But compared to your cell phone, you know, some men do curls. <laughs> Another item that was a status symbol of the time was car air conditioning. We would roll up our windows Sit up and like, yo, what's happening? Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> and as soon as that light turned green and you made that corner and you saw nobody that you knew was there, you rolled all the windows down. And we didn't have electric windows. We had to roll them down. Step on the gas, get air running in the car, and then, oh shoot, there's another friend I know. Stop, roll the windows up, <laughs> pull them back, yo, what's happening? <laughs> and again, that was a sad symbol of our time. <laughs> So, <laughs> on the wall, you notice there are no city names, just the um, landmarks that you would associate with Route 66. If you take a picture of the entire frame, you'll see Route 66 painted all the way across from Santa Monica all the way to Chicago. And the white strip under it tells you about how it was painted in the style brushes, and one of the brushes only had one hair on it. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, know, you very thank much. You. Thank, you. thank you for your service as well. Oh, thank, thank you for coming in. I appreciate, appreciate it. Thank you. As long as we can keep history alive here, that's my aim. Absolutely. And you're doing a great job. Thank you.